Okay, we in Second Ezra the ninth chapter, and once the Most High spoke on what happens after death and how people are gonna be tormented and so forth. He said in um, verse eleven, he said, "And they that have loath my law, abuse the Most High's laws, even you saying we not under the law, while they yet had yet liberty." And when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, and we're telling you to repent and keep the commandments of the Most High, understood not, but despised it. You hate the fact that we're saying that you have to keep the laws of the Most High. The same must know it after death by pain. Hear that? Well, I'm warning you. He said the same must know it after death by pain. Torment. That's why he told us. And therefore be not thou, be thou not curious how the unrighteous shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is and for whom the world is created. So we must be inquiring the things that will help us to be saved. Right? Because a lot of y'all say, I'm saved. But what is being saved? Because y'all say y'all saved, but are you really saved? Are you saved from what the definition here in the Bible says being saved is? Which is what? Luke 1, 68 through 71. Luke, the first chapter, verse 68. Blessed be the most high power of Israel. First, he identified himself as the most high power of Israel, the Israelites, the 12 tribes of Israel, not anybody else in the New Testament. For he who is the most high have visited and redeemed his people, who are the Israelites, the 12 tribes of Israel, throughout this Bible. Remember Paul said in uh, Romans 11, 1 and 2, that the Most High has not cast away his people, which he foreknew. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. We just went through five. That's all said, we have sinned. They didn't put, this on, put themselves on a pedestal. And they were rolling with the Most High. That's why they got a book named after them. But they ain't put themselves up there to think that there was all that. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. Which have been since the world began. That we should be saved from our enemies. This being saved, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. That's being saved. We got to be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Ain't going to be no more tears. Ain't going to be no more fear. The only fear we're supposed to have now is the fear of the Most High. Also, that's why my second shot said, don't fear him that can kill the body. And after that, they can't do nothing. He said, fear him that when he have killed the body, can cast your butt into hell. That's what we just read. The wicked, they're going to they gonna, they gonna know after death, by pain. They got to go through pain and torment. That's not where we want to be. We want to serve him without fear. In holiness and righteousness before him. All the days of our life. In holiness and righteousness. Because that's keeping other most high's laws. Statute of commandments. All the days of our life. So that's what being saved is right there. Y'all think y'all being saved just because y'all call on the name of Jesus and don't have to keep no commandments. He didn't break the law. So now, going back to Deuteronomy 4th chapter, verse 26, he said, I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that ye shall soon utterly perish from off the land where until ye go over Jordan to possess it. Say, you're going to you got to leave that land, man. 
Ye shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. Mm, mm, mm. It's cold, ain't it? He already tell us what we're going to do, what's going to happen to us, and what we do. Follow through just what he said we're going to do. Um, Jeremiah 17 and 4. Jeremiah 17 and 4. And thou, even thyself, we as the Israelites, shall discontinue from thy inheritance, just like he said, that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not, for ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. So once he said he's going to scatter us amongst all these nations, especially here in America, he said we're going to serve our enemies, right? Deuteronomy 28, 48. Because most of the time you read the Bible, we're in captivity. He told us in Deuteronomy 28, 48, he said, Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the most high thy, excuse me, which the most high shall sin against thee, in hunger for not break for, for breaking his laws that you say we not under preachers. In hunger, you want something to eat, you gotta get it from your enemy. And in thirst, you want something to drink, you gotta get it from your enemy. And in nakedness, you want something to put on your back. You gotta get it from your enemy. And in one of all things, everything you want, you gotta get it from your enemy. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. And we had that yoke of iron upon our neck. In slavery. And we are destroyed now for a lack of knowledge because we have forgotten the law of the Most High. And the Most High shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies. So, what symbol is America? The eagle, the bald eagle, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. We don't understand their language. A nation of fierce continents which shall not regard the person of the old nor show favor to the young. Mm -hmm. So the word of both sides is real, y'all. And it's true as true can be. We just got to look at it for what it is and change. This is all about changing. Hearing it, you, you hear it, therefore you're learning it, and you got to live it, and you got to apply it in your life. And it works. Verse 27, most I said, and the most, uh, verse of uh, Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, and the most I shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be few, ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the most I shall lead you. He told us in Deuteronomy 28 and 64. Reminding us again, and the most I shall scatter thee among all people. From the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there when we go among these other nations. Thou shalt serve other gods. That's these religions. That's dealing with other gods. Because they're not dealing with the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob being the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. Because that would only be the most high. would understand the most high is only the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob being the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. He's only the power of Israel. That we read in Luke 1. In the New Testament, verse 68, the power of Israel. And among these nations, he said, look, he said, and the most I shall gather thee among all people, verse 64, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there, when we go among these other nations, thou shalt serve other gods, other idols, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. You mean to tell me Moses know about the Catholic Church, Baptist Church? <clears throat> And all these other religions, church, even wood and stone, that's still going to be your religions right there. Wood and stone. That's the religions right there. He said, and among these nations, ye shall thou find no ease, neither shall the soul of thy foot have rest, but the most I shall give thee there a trembling heart, trembling mind, and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind, and thy life shall hang in doubt. Before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have no assurance of thy life. 
Well, a lot of people, they write in these curses, man. Because they're not doing what they're supposed to do to be to have that peace and that that the love of the Most High and do what He said in Deuteronomy 28 and one and verse one and two. This is a solution right here, and it shall come to pass. It's the prayer, just the future. If was a condition, thou shalt hearken, listen diligently unto the voice of the Most High thy power to observe and to do. All his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Most High, thy power, Yasharela, twelve tribes of Israel, will set thee on high, how high? Above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee, and overtake thee, if, that's condition, thou shalt hearken, listen unto the voice of the Most High, thy power. Listen to the voice of the Most High, your power, and do what he say do. It's real easy, man. Blessed shall you be in the city. You can be blessed everywhere you go. You're going to have a different aura about you. You're going to be, remember, say, you're going to be illuminated because you're doing what the most I say do. He's not a man that should lie. Look. Numbers 23 and 19. The most is not a man. First of all, he's a man. He ain't no woman. He ain't no man and woman. He's a man. The Most High is, a, is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Has he said and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? But understand. You hearing what he's saying, we just got to adhere to it. Because we so many times have not listened to what he's saying. That's why we're in this condition we're in right now, y'all. Deuteronomy 4 and 28. He said, and there, when we be scattered among these heathen, ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, neither which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. But it, but if from thence Thou shalt seek the most high thy power. When we scatter among these lands that he scatters among, we seek the most high our power. Thou shalt find him. Thou seek him early. If thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So I say, you can't really say that you really seek the most high with all your heart and all your soul if you ain't talking about him. You ain't praising the most high. You ain't giving all glory to the Most High, but you need to be exalted yourself, and you ain't never talk about the Most High exaltation. He let us see this day, man. How about that? He gave us the sound mind to be able to think, whereas he said, hey, he was giving them eyes that they don't see and ears that they don't hear until this day. A lot of people don't understand this and don't want to, but yet still they want to talk about you because you care about your own soul, making it. Whereas in the end, the judgment is going to be like, hey, you dismiss the counsel of my hand. Therefore, like I say, those that's wicked are going to have to deal with the death and after death pain and torment. As written in his Bible. This is what he said. Verse 29. We in Deuteronomy the fourth chapter. But if from thence thou shalt seek the most high thy power. Thou shalt find him. If thou seek him with all thy heart. And with all thy soul. You got to be really into this. You can't say you love him. And you ain't never talking about him. You ain't about it. About it. About it. How you about him? When thou art in tribulation, catching a lot of hell, going through a lot of troubles, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days what we in now, we in the last days, y'all. If thou turn to the Most High thy power, and shall be obedient unto his voice, for the Most High thy power is a merciful power. I mean, he's not going to give us what we deserve. 
He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he sware unto them. For as now are the days that are past, which were before thee. That's the past. Since the day that the Most High created man upon the earth. And acts from the one side of heaven even to the other. Whether there have been any such thing as this great thing is. Or have been heard like it. Did ever people hear the voice of the Most High speaking out of the midst of a, the fire as thou hast heard and lived? Hello. What nation can say this? When your history had to say you heard the voice of the Most High speaking out of fire and you lived. And you went consumed. Remember what it says in verse 24 for the Most High's eye power. Most High's eye power in Israel is a consuming fire, even a jealous power. That's why he's saying this. Did ever people hear the voice of the Most High speaking out of the midst of the fire as thou hast heard and lived? Most High, the fire could be burning people up or burning everything they have up. Or have the Most High a shade to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation by temptations, by signs, and by wonders, and by war, and by a mighty hand, and by a stretched out arm, and by great terrors, According to all that the Most High, your power, Israel, lights, did for you in Egypt before your eyes. We see this. Unto thee it will show that thou mightest know that the Most High, he is the Most High power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There is none else beside him. Understand, understand this. Out of heaven he made thee to hear his voice that he might instruct thee. Tell us what to do. And upon earth he showed thee his great fire. And thou heard of his words out of the midst of the fire. And because he loved thy fathers, therefore he chose their seed after them. And brought thee out in his sight with his mighty power out of Egypt. To drive out nations from before thee, greater and mightier than thou art to bring thee in, to give thee their land for an inheritance as it is this day. Know therefore this day and consider it in thine heart that the Most High, he is the Most High power of in heaven above and upon the earth beneath. There is none else. Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee this day, that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which the most high thy power giveth thee forever. Then Moses severed three cities on this side Jordan toward the sun rising, that the slayer might flee thither, which should kill his neighbor unawares. You know, accidental killing. So he, he separated three cities that the one that killed someone um, unaware as unexpectedly and hated him not in times past. He didn't hate him in times past, you know, so you, meaning you hated this person, so you kill him, you had a reason to kill him, but you didn't really hate him, it was an accident, accidental death that you killed someone accidentally and hated him not in times past, so you didn't hate him. And that fleeing in, unto one of these th cities he might live. So it's, just, it's called a uh, city of refuge, in other words. You run to these, one of these cities if you did this to live. Namely, Berzer in the wilderness, in the plain country of the Reubenites, and Ramoth in Gilead, of the Gadites, and Golan, in Bashan, of the Manasseh sites. You know, he told you you run at a city in Ru where Reuben was at and where Gad was at and where Manasseh was at. One half of where Manasseh was at. Manasseh, Manasseh had one side of Jordan and the other side of Jordan. And this is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. These are the testimonies and the statutes and the judgment which Moses spake unto the children of Israel after they came forth out of Egypt. On this side of Jordan, in the valley over against Beth 
Peor, in the land of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who dwelt at Hezbon, whose Moses, whom Moses and the children of Israel smote after they were come forth out of Egypt, take their land over. And they possessed his land in the land of Og, king of Bashan, two kings of the Amorites, which were on this side of Jordan toward the sun rising from Eror, which is by the bank of the river Arnon, even unto Mount Sion, which is Hermon, and all the plain of this side of Jordan eastward, even unto the sea of the plain, under the springs of Bishka. You see? So, that's Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. And it's very important that we see that, um, you know, the things that's been given to us in this lesson, and, you know, we're going to continue on with going over the laws and bringing more understanding to our nation to change. When Moscow Shai say you must be born again, that's, that's changing. So we can look at this and come back to the Most High's laws, statute of commandments, and look at what's right from wrong in his eyes and what's marvelous. You know, that really stood out and came out. You know, I brought five prophets out and showed you that it was, they all said, we have sinned. You know, we have broken the Most High's laws, even though they were righteous men. Why a book is written with their name on it, you know, prophets and so forth. But they still didn't account themselves as one of the righteous. Because we know in part and prophesy in part. And the little that I do know, I'm presenting to you to the spirit of the Most High, and I hope it was edifying. And I say, Crumb Most High, Crumb Mashiach Yahweh Shai, and Crumb Yasharala, and I'm out. Shalom.